Hi there, in this video we're going to look at what happens when we apply the Euler Lagrange to a particular functional, but instead of getting an equation and the equation out at the end, uh, the equation ends up being exactly equal to zero. So it turns out in that case, if that happens, then we can show that the value of the functional is a function of the end points only or the boundary conditions. Okay, so that's what we're going to show in this video and we're going to talk about now. I uh, decided just to write the stuff out in the video here uh, and then just read through some of it because uh, there's an awful lot to it and it's too easy to make a mistake, okay? Plus, I won't go through every single bit of the detail. I'll show some of it up and then you can go through some of it yourself if you, if you want to, okay? So, there's the equation there, okay? So, that's the functional. Whenever we work through the Euler Lagrange for the functional, we'll get the terms here. Uh, 2x plus 6 yy derivative and for the second part here we end up with minus 2x minus 6 yy derivative so when we add them together we end up getting zero okay so again I won't get through the whole proof of that if you went through the previous videos you that'll become that'll be quite familiar uh, to you okay so what we're going to do here then is before we get started I thought I would just get through a quick note here would be quite useful I think um, if we had a, a functional, so f, we've got l equals a, that's a function of x, y, and y derivative, then if we worked out the partial derivative of the function with respect to, say, x, y, or y derivative, then we'd have partial l by partial x, and the y and y derivative would be act as a constant, okay? Just as you would do normally with any partial differentiation. And if you partial l by partial y, then the x and the y derivatives would look like a constant. And the partial L by partial y der der derivative, then the x and the y's would look like co constants. Okay, so that's just uh, as you would normally see with partial differentiation. So it means that we've got these kind of identities here. So we can say that partial x, or partial x, partial y, partial y, partial y derivative, partial y derivative, these are going to equal 1, as usual, as you would expect. Now this extra part here, if we tick pick just one of these, we looked at partial y derivative with respect to partial x, then we could say that we're differentiating with respect to partial x. So let's say this example here. If we're differentiating with respect to partial x, then y and y derivative just look like constants. Okay, so in this instance here, that y derivative just looks like a constant. So we're differentiating a constant with respect to x. So when we differentiate a constant, we get zero. Now the same can be said for each of these six, okay, so, so three of them are just actually reciprocals of, of so that one there is just a reciprocal of that, okay. So we can keep these in mind as well, okay. So if we were to write down the Euler-Lagrange, that's the Euler-Lagrange in terms of total differential. Now I've got a derivation of the Euler-Lagrange in terms of total differential in one of the other um, playlists if you're unsure of one of the other videos so if you're unsure where that comes from you can go and check that out in one of the other videos also you can have a look in uh, first and second order and uh, total differentials um, and the snippet section if you're unsure now the interesting thing about this little proof here is that it relies on a bit of basic algebra so if we were to look at this here we can see that this term here the d2y by dx2 is only appears in one position in this um, identity, okay? And the same with the dy by dx, it only appears in one position. So it means that this term here, d2f by dy derived of 2, has got to be equal to 0. And this, again, the coefficient here, the d2f by uh, partial y, partial y derived of that as well would have to be equal to 0, okay? So if we take uh, this one here, okay, uh, as a starting point, we can say that if this here is equal to zero, then it, it's going to tell us something about the function. That's the whole point of this. It tells us something about the function. It tells the function must be of the form p of x y derived of plus q of y. Now, we can prove that just by differentiating that function f with respect to y derived of twice. So, we'll just quickly read through this one here. So, if we uh, differentiate it once with respect to y derivative, so that's the function, then this here is a multiplication of two functions, so you've got to use a product rule. So we're going to have um, partial 
p by partial y derived of times y derivative and then you have partial y derivative partial y derivative times p okay so that's those two terms and then the final term is just partial q by partial y derivative now from what we did above oh it's actually below isn't it what we did from below here we can then start applying uh, what, what we learned so we know that that partial p by partial y derivative equals zero now we know it equals zero because we're differentiating with respect to y derivative and if we're differentiating with respect to y derivative any any other function that's a function of simply x or y must be equal must be um treated as a constant okay so it means that that dp partial p there um, uh, acts like a constant so the whole thing is differentiating a constant so that term there goes to zero and again we've got partial y derivative of partial y derivative is one and this thing here is zero for the same reason that this is zero this is a, a function of um, y okay and we're differentiating with respect to y derivative okay so that term there equals zero now we're only then le left with the, the p of x and if we differentiate that again with respect to y derivative then we get our dp by dy derivative and again we're differentiating with respect to y derivative so anything that's a function of simply x and y are treated as constants so that just looks like a constant so the whole thing then just equals zero okay so that's a little proof that the function is of that form so now we know what form the function takes we can take that function there and we can put it back in okay to the uh, total the Euler Lagrange written in terms of the total derivative so all we're doing is replacing the function f with these terms here throughout this equation okay now I've done that here okay so I've replaced um, p of x y derivative plus q of y for each of the f so you ended up with you know the four terms that's term one two three and four just from the four terms that we have up here one two term three and term four okay now I don't want to read through the derivation of all of them but I've what I've done I've split it into eight so there's going to be a factor here factor so it's going to be one two three four five six seven eight different values okay so I've worked through all of them here um, I'll probably if I talk through maybe the first the first three of them I'll talk through and then I'll just leave the other um, five up so you can have a look at it um, because in effect it's just kind of um, uh, kind of boot work okay in order to get to the answer at the, at the end okay so we'll go through each of them so if I say partial by partial y of p of x y derivative okay so that's just the first part of the first term here okay then we're going to end up with uh, partial p by partial y times y derivative and again it's the product rule we'll have partial y derivative by partial um, y all times p of x okay and we know that again partial y derivative of partial y that's going to be equal to um, a value of zero because again we are if we are differentiating with respect to um, y then it means any other function that's a function of y derivative um, or um, a function of x is going to be equal to zero okay so that means that that whole thing there just equal to zero and this part here uh, just is partial p by partial y times partial y derivative so that's the first one there and uh, the second one straightforward partial q by partial y and uh, the third one well it's a mixed partial so what you're going to do is you're going to differentiate it with respect to x first of all so we'll differentiate it with respect to x and again we end up with a product rule so we end up with these two terms here okay but one of the terms again is equal to zero okay and that's the second term here so we, we differentiate this term here again with respect now to y derivative okay so we're taking this differentiate it with respect to y derivative um, but the value here of y derivative um, 
partial p by partial y derivative again that's going to be equal to zero because we're differentiating respect to y derivative so f is just a function of x or y will equal a constant so that whole thing equals zero so and this thing here partial y by partial y derivative y derivative by y derivative that just equals one so you end up with a dp by dx partial p by partial x now I don't want to read through all the rest of them because it's a bit kind of tedious but you, if you want you, you can pause this just now and then you can read through what we have here up to what's that is that can you read that so it's four five and six so you can read four five and six and you can pause that and I'll bring up uh, the last little bit okay so um, I'm going to uh, the last one number eight you can have a wee look at that derivation as well. Okay, so that's the eighth one there. Okay, so we've we'll worked through all of those. And what you're left over at the end is this uh, partial wee p by partial y, y derivative plus partial q by partial y minus partial p partial x minus partial p partial y partial y derivative equals zero. Okay, so these two terms here, that one and that one, cancel. So you end up with a partial q upon partial y equals partial p upon partial x. So that there is the final thing, that's what we've been doing all along. We've got to this point here. Okay. Now this is good because this can then be written as P of X dy plus Q of Y dx. Now that there is an exact differential, okay, or a total differential. So if you want you can go and check in the snippet section, you can check under total differential. You can see first and second order total differentials. If you're not sure why that's an exact differential. So um, it means then that if that's an exact differential, then if we were to take one over to the other side, it doesn't matter about the um, sign here, it just can be incorporated into either of the functions. So you end up with p of x dy plus q of y dx, and it's, a, it's just a total differential. So it means that um, the total differential is written as df x of y. Okay, again. That's got a simple geometric explanation, and if you go into the snippet section, you'll see exactly where that comes from. Okay, um, so it means that if we were to integrate both sides of this, we would just end up with a function of x and y. Okay, and because that's a, a total differential, it means that the function that we started off with, if we go back to the function we started off with, the function we started off with f is simply a function of um, a value x, a function of y, and a function of y derivative. Okay, so if we can pop them back into the page here. So what we have then is this thing, the whole thing here, can be written as our function of x, y, and y derivative. So all we're really saying then is our functional here, okay, our functional here is actually going to be a function only of x and y, but not y derivative. So it's going to be a function of purely the uh, end positions only. So it's not going to be dependent on the path between uh, the two endpoints. Okay. So it means that the the functional is a function of the endpoints only, or if you like to say, it's a function of the boundary conditions. Okay. So that's all there is for this proof, and uh, I'll get you on the next video. Okay. Bye bye.